Yo, what's up guys? You got Pokeaim here with a video on Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. Today I'll be discussing the new information that was recently confirmed by Serebii.net, aka Joe Merrick. He got the opportunity to visit the Pokemon Company International and at that point he was able to play Pokemon Let's Go for some hours and he confirmed that there are no held items or abilities in the game now this was speculated by a ton of people myself included and i talked about it a little bit in videos but now that it is finally confirmed i wanted to give my thoughts on that all right so let's start off with just talking about a few things and then yeah, I, this video will be all over the place honestly uh, i'm going to talk about one this first so uh, joe tweeted about this and a few other people have tweeted about this as well um, that their personal thoughts about Pokemon Let's Go and how it was fun and whatnot. I mean, I obviously expect it to be. It's an updated Kanto, and I like that they're sticking true to what uh, Red, Blue, and Yellow were. There was no in-game abilities, uh, there was no held items, and it was still a fun metagame, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But as we're going through uh, Joe's tweets about his personal thoughts, he said the game is going to be fun thing this winter. It's not for everyone. Yes, not a competitive game, and it isn't trying to be. For that, we have next year. If it wasn't for our knowledge that next year would be more traditional, I too would be worried. However, now that I have extended time with the game, I can see what they're getting at. It's for new players and those who enjoy the overall franchise. It's just not competitive. Now, I'm going to be proving that wrong right now from a singles perspective. Keep in mind, I'm a singles player, uh, predominantly small down metagames. This is not coming from a doubles perspective or a VGC perspective. If that's where that tweet came from, I completely understand that. As obviously they don't have battle spot or anything like that in the game. Um, they do have Wi-Fi battles though and oh, I'm super excited about that. So He says that the game is not competitive. Now I needed a little bit more insight onto why he said this. So I hit him up on uh, Discord. Um, because again, I just wanted him to be clear on why he said that, and to which he replied, Lack of hold items and abilities and possible changes to EV system means lack of variety, so it's not competitive. Now, obviously I thank them and I disagree with that, uh, and we'll be talking about why in a second. Uh, so let's actually go back to what Sarah B said. So, um, IVs fully appear to be within the game, but with limited time with the early part of the game, it is impossible to completely determine if the IV spreads are identical to how they were in the game since Ruby and Sapphire. I mean, makes perfect sense. Before we used to have DVs and stuff, and then uh, like 15 DVs or whatever. Now IVs, which are up to 31. And then he said EVs are a different story. At present, it's hard to say what the situation is with EVs. After some battles, an additional plus one appears in one stat, such as speed or attack. But this plus one is also added with the candy obtained from transferring Pokemon with it listing how many uh, more candy a Pokemon needs for a boost. So I, I'm not entirely sure like on that, what that means. Uh, I'm assuming it means like after training or after catching a Pokemon, you will get EVs or some sort of whatever their form of EVs are. As in like, you know, if you battle enough Magikarps, you get speed EVs added at the end. Uh, but apparently now candy also gives you that plus one. So. That could just mean EVs are out of the game. That could also just mean that they upped it so that you can actually get extra EVs from candies uh, before uh, for specific Pokemon. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure how that works, so we're not going to touch upon that right now. Um, but we will be talking about how it can be a competitive game. Now, again, when I think of Pokemon Let's Go, I think of RBYOU, and some people might be thinking, well, people play RBYOU, that's not competitive at all, and here I am to give my thoughts on that. So first off, we're gonna go to smogun.com. And on smogun.com, they have a player base as well as on uh, Pokemon Perfect forums. They have uh, one of the strongest, if not the strongest RBYOU player base uh, for this, for the main, you know, for, for literally RBYOU, right? They have consistent players, uh, just to name a few, and obviously these names don't mean much to probably you guys, but Tiba, Issa, Marco, Alexander, Pezene, GG Fan, Ray Scarface, Troller, uh, Metalgross, Rudolph, and Bomber, Th this list just goes on. Basically, uh, if you think of current OU right now, and you think of top players, you probably think of, and if you are in tournaments, you probably think of ABR, uh, you probably think of Blunder, you probably think of Brofist, right? That's something you think of. Now, these are those of RBYOU. So RBY has a consistent player base despite not having abilities, despite not having um, held items. It's a playable metagame that has tournament coverage uh, as it has it's in Smogon World Cup, right here you see RBYOU. Uh, 
It also has Smoke on Classic, which was run by Lavos, who is also a really solid uh, old gens player. Um, and you actually go through, uh, you'll see that Bomber is was also in Smoke on Classic. Obviously, this is all the other stuff, but RBY is part of it. You'll see M Dragon. You see Alexander, uh, which I believe was uh, a person I named for RBYOU. So you'll see top players here. Um, and then you also have, oh, I already had that open there. You also have the RBYOU World Championships, which was won by Tiba. Tiba was also a, a person that I named uh, when it comes down to RBY. I'm just trying to show that there is consistency. So it is definitely a competitive metagame because there is consistency. There's also the Ruins of Alf, which are pretty much dedicated to old generations uh, 1 through 6, uh, but it does have a punch of Gen 1. And then, of course, that's just a chancy. We'll talk about that in a bit. And of course, I, I mentioned Pokemon Perfect, uh, where it was a site that was once just dedicated to Gens 1 through 3. Now it's kind of expanded to Gen up to Gen 5, I believe. And uh, if you actually go through the tournaments, uh, Troller was one of the persons I also mentioned as you know a top RBY player. And if you go through the tournaments, you see one by Troller, one by Troller, one by Troller, one by Troller. And then you see Lush and you see Metagross and things like that. But you, you see consistency, which is what I'm trying to get at. So there is definitely this competitive vibe to uh, RBYOU. There is definitely competition in RBYOU, especially because out of all the players that enter, you'll see a uh, straight up consistency in it. Um, if you actually go to the, sorry, I should have been a little bit more um, clear with this and I apologize about that. I just had a whole bunch of things open. But if you actually go to the Small and Classic, which is like I said, another tournament, um, you'll see the RBY Cup Finals. This was uh, something that had, and we'll even just go to round one. RBY Cup round one. This was something that had, I believe, 500, 600 players in it. Something close to that, maybe a little bit uh, less. Uh, but it was won by uh, someone who has proven themselves in RBY over and over again. And keep in mind, it's Alexander, by the way. Alexander won the RBY uh, finals. And even look who he played. You see some uh, players who have at least proven themselves in the generations. Obviously, Solon and Flaming Victini are a little bit more uh, newer players. But I just wanted to show there that... Uh, while the argument can be said, well, it's not a competitive thing because there's no natures, no abilities, um, no whatever held items. Um, I don't know about no natures, forget that. No held items and no abilities. Uh, it, it, it's shown that consistency is there, and despite a whole bunch of different players playing, people are able to be consistent. And, and keep in mind, RBY back then was also pretty nasty, where crits were based on speed. Um, you couldn't paralyze normal types of normal type attacks. Hyper Beam had no recharge, right? So this is a metagame that's pretty wild, but has consistency. The top players still, people play it one, people are playing it, and it has consistency. So that's just something I wanted to show, that it doesn't matter that there are no held items and no abilities. Um, it does have consistency, and we can even go up to GSC. Uh, GSC doesn't have uh, abilities either. It does have the introduction of held items, and you'll see leftovers on a ton of Pokemon, but it doesn't have uh, the again the abilities and it's still a very 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 uh playable metagame very respected metagame especially on smogon and uh it has really consistent players and it still has innovation and that's something else i wanted to talk about too uh, one thing that joe said to me uh which is why he made his opinion and again i'm not flaming him at all i, I love sarah beyond that it's you know i wouldn't be with pokemon i wouldn't have known about diamond and pearl without sarah just checking, you know, one day on the computer in computer class. So I love Cerebi. Don't get me wrong. I'm just trying to say why this game can be competitive. Uh, again, feel free to disagree as well. Uh, but uh, he says um, no abilities and no held items means lack of rarity, so not as competitive. And that is also where it's wrong. Let's go to Chansey's smoke. This is why we have Chansey. Let's go to Chansey's old school um, Ruby Sapphire decks. I love the way Chansey looked back then. The main set was Ice Beam, Soft Blow, Thunder Wave, Counter, Thunderbolt, Counter. That was the main set uh, back then. However, you flip through the generations and you'll see nowadays that the, the main Chansey set would be Reflect, Thunder Wave, Soft Boiled, and Seismic Toss. This allows, Reflect is armor, literally armor back then. It doesn't end until you switch out. So this allows Chansey to um, Stay in 1v1 a lot of the metagame. Uh, and a few other examples of changes that are happening. Uh, Fire Blast on Tauros is one of them that sometimes is ran, which is something that wasn't before. You have Psychic Slowbro. Um, Reflect Amnesia Lax is another one, or various 
Snorlax um, variations. And big shout out to Kevin as well for helping me with a lot of this. But like Amnesia Rest or Amnesia Boom. And uh, basically because Special was one stat back then, which is obviously not something we have now, uh, Chansey was actually a, a special attacking threat. It had base 105 special, which means it had base 105 special attack and base 105 special defense. So uh, just to show that while there will for sure be Pokemon that are just better than the rest and will sit there. I mean, when you think of RBYOU, if you do think of RBYOU, you know the big four is Chansey, Executor, Snorlax, and Tauros. These are the Pokemon that stand up above the rest as the best Pokemon in RBYOU. And then you'll have some variations on team with maybe Alakazam as a lead, Gengar as a lead, Starmie as a lead, Jinx as a lead, whatever, Jolteon. Um, and maybe you'll have something in the back like a Lapras, a Zapdos, things like that. Yes, there are definitely consistencies in this generation, but that has nothing to do with the fact that there are no held items and abilities. Fast forward to the generation we're in now. Landorus has like, what, 10 million percent usage? You'll see Toxpex, you'll see Coco, Greninja, Magirna. Yes, there are good Pokemon, but that has nothing to do with the lack of... Uh, abilities and held items that's more so the pokemon themselves their move sets and just what they can do and again this is just something you'll see in every generation in adv tyranitar is a top threat in gsc snorlax is on every team for good reason in 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 dpp heatran should be on every team that's one of the top pokemon you got jirachi you got tyranitar there you got zapdos uh in, in gen 5 uh, you have, again, Lander Asterion, you still have Kiram Black, you got Ferrothorn, there's Rain, things like that, there's Keldeo, big Keldeo, right? Gen 6, Mega Metagross right now, plus Specs Keldeo is the wave, it's the thing that's being ran. So there are consistencies in generations that are definitely there, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean there is going to be a lack of variation in teams. Um, there will for sure be things that are there always, uh, but that does not mean that it cancels out, you know, Verity. So that does not mean that it's not competitive is what I'm trying to get at. I hope that makes sense. Um, another thing, the lack of potentially EVs is pretty interesting, right? This is a Lalakazam from uh, Gen 1. This is how Alakazam looks in Gen 1. Uh, you can max everything in Gen 1, 15 DVs. So this was Alakazam stats, right? Uh, as you can see, it's different from a Gen 6 Alakazam that has max every stat. Alakazam actually has like plus one in every single stat than it had before. I think it's 15 and you know, more. And, 31, yeah, it makes sense, right? So this is a uh, bashful nature. So assuming Zam doesn't have any EVs um, at all, uh, assuming Zam, assuming EVs aren't even in the game, this would be an Alakazam uh, most likely, right? This will most likely be an Alakazam. And I think that's also fine. Obviously for defensive mons, that does ruin a little bit of uh, what a mon can do, right? But if every single mon doesn't have EVs, then if every single mon is like this, for example, let's go to Needle Queen. If every single mon is like this, I think that'd be okay too because everything got nerfed. Not just, you know, the strong special attackers, but everything got nerfed. So assuming this is Needle Queen stats, right? Everything got nerfed. Now, of course, again, it's not confirmed that there are no EVs in the game. Um, he said that's just a different story. Uh, so it's... It, at some battles, additional peers in one stat, such as speed of attack, but this isn't plus one, and also add up the candy obtained from Trenchant Pokemon, which is listing how many candy you need for a boost. I, so I don't, I, we don't know. And he said at, at present, it's hard to say what the situation with EVs is. So this is just speculation, of course. And obviously, if there are no natures either, then you wouldn't be able to do something like careful, which would, or calm, which would give you like a plus 20 boost or whatever um, to the stat. So uh, that I, I can 100% agree with yeah there will be a lack of verity because ev sprites couldn't be the same but that doesn't mean a pokemon still can't do what it does especially with pokemon being weaker like one mon that i feel like will be super good for example is mew mew can still taunt wisp soft boiled assuming this is all legal and psychic slash ice beam probably maybe ice beam for dragonite maybe maybe psychic for mega gengar and things like that or shadow ball whatever or seism toss this is still something mew can do Obviously, it won't be able to take the hits as well because you're not going max, but when a Pokemon also can't hit you as hard as what it used to, I think it will balance itself out. We'll, we'll see though, of course. Again, this is not confirmed about the EVs. Uh, he even said itself, it's hard to say. Now, why am I excited about this metagame? So I, I think I've shown that it can for sure be a competitive metagame, at least based on the past RBYOU metagame, and now Pokemon will definitely be there. Uh, first off, I'm excited to use mons that uh, aren't necessary. This is my opinion now, right? I'm excited to use mons that uh, weren't necessarily as good back then, but might be better 
due to moveset buffs, and I think that's a big thing too. Um, let's go back to Cerebi real quick. The the Pokemon moves Bouncy Bubble and Buzzy Buzz, whatever. Uh, Eevee, Sizzly, Slide. They, um, Buzzy, Bouncy Bubble, I believe, is uh, like a Giga Drain type water type attack. Buzzy Buzz, Sizzly, Slide. One of them is Fire, one of them is uh, like Electric, I believe. Um, bump the names, I don't really care. I, I, I don't give a damn about the names. <laughs> I really don't care. Uh, the, the point of this is updated movesets. So, uh, Pikachu and Eevee obviously got them because they're your, your starters and they want to give you incentive to use them. But let's also go to Charizard. Um, the way Mega Evolution works in the game is prior in the battle yourself, you can either decide if you want to become Mega Charizard X or Mega Charizard Y. And in the trailer, uh, Mega Charizard X was shown doing Dragon Pulse, which means that Mega Charizard X got Dragon Pulse or Mega Char Charizard, excuse me, got Dragon Pulse in its moveset. Uh, and this was something to obviously benefit Mega Charizard X um, and also let Mega Charizard Y hit Mega Charizard X. So um, this is pretty cool too because it means that there will definitely be that little bit of uh, surprise factor in what the Mon can Mega evolve into. But also you can use sets that might benefit both things like again Mewtwo which I'm sure will be quick ban to Uber whatever can it, it should be. Uh, it should, there's no reason why it shouldn't be OU. Um, or it should be OU. Whereas in the generation before, Mew was also Uber back in RBY, but Psychic was also broken as it had no dark types. And in this metagame, again, we'll talk about consistencies, Pokemon that I feel you'll see uh, everywhere. I'm pretty sure you're gonna see Alolan Muck everywhere, right? Because this is a Pokemon that can check Alakazam with Pursuit, it can check uh, Mega Gengar, it can check Psychic types in general. Uh, another Mon, and it can also check Mew, though Wisp can obviously beat it down. Another Mon, maybe Mega Gyarados, uh, Alolan Persian, so things like that. You will see some variation between dark types. Um, what the hell was I saying? I completely forgot. But yeah, so <laughs> basically I'm hoping for more updated movesets like that for all the Pokemon. Now, uh, obviously we don't know if stats are the same either. It was He said it was hard to tell based on IVs. If it's the same, it's usual. But I, I'm hoping just for buffs for everything uh, as far as movesets go. Just to compensate for, first off, the lack of egg moves. Um... In the example I'll give you right now, Snorlax, I believe Curse is an egg move for Snorlax. So if there are no egg moves confirmed, there's no breeding in that game. Um, that means that Lax can't have Curse unless they updated it to its actual move pool, right? Uh, there was, they did say in an interview though that there was definitely something there for competitive players if they wanted to play. Um, Though the Pokemon Company International agrees that it's not a competitive game, right? That's that's whatever. Fine, they don't play singles. <laughs> they don't do singles. Um, so that's just something I'm obviously excited for and hoping to see happen, as I think that'll contribute to its actual competitiveness. Like if I'm Snorlax right now, and I'm just going off the top of my head, and there's actually a thread on Smogon about speculation about move sets and stuff. Uh, if I'm Snorlax, I run Earthquake for for sure. I run Earthquake for sure. Uh, maybe Body Slam, things like that. Um, Self-destruct, that's still legal back then, which it probably will be, which I'm excited to use on my Snorlax. And things like that, just stuff like that, right? If I'm not able to use Curse, I can use things like that. Snorlax is still relatively bulky, can still do things. Now, as I said, the reason I'm excited for this metagame is because I feel like we're coming off of one of the worst OUs of all time. Um, as far as interest, as far as people having interest goes, like... Ultra Sun and Moon, Sun and Moon, interest died off immediately. I, I don't think anybody can deny that, unfortunately. And I think a lot of that has to do with the Pokemon we have in OU. Toxapex, for example. That thing is a pain. And uh, <laughs> having to deal with Regenerator. Regenerator is one of the most annoying abilities to deal with. Landorus being on every team. I know that annoys people too. Uh, Intimidate being another ability. That's going to be kind of scary though. I'm a little bit interested to see how setup mods go without Intimidate to buffer it. And obviously a physical special split is in the game now. So like I said, it's an updated candle. We don't know about the hyper beam mechanics and things like that too. I would love for hydro cannon to not have a recharge turn. That's something we don't know just yet. Um, again, sorry if this video is all over the place. I'm just talking about this. Uh, feel free to give your thoughts. You can disagree with me. That's fine. I'm still excited about this game. Um, but I'm really excited for a break from Sun and Moon. I don't feel like I could play, and I feel like this goes for a lot of people, at least from OU. I love UU this generation. It's my favorite, um, it's my favorite tier this generation, but at least from OU, I don't think a lot of people can last another year with um, Recover, Toxic Spikes, Pex, uh, Broken Magirna, Broken Greninja, uh, Landorus, Zygarde, like mods like that, that won't either be around or won't have their abilities slash specific movesets. I mean, uh, 
They said that Let's Go is the original 150 plus Lola Mons. Who knows? Maybe more can happen. Uh, who actually knows? But um, I just think this is a good break, and I still think there is definitely that. There are where there are Pokemon, there is a way to play competitive. Period. Right? I gave you the. I, I, I talked about like the first 10 minutes of the video, RBYOU, and how it is a metagame that is established that still has creative changes and it also has dominant players and if you have dominant players that means there is some comp there it, there's competition like throughout all the competition they're able to still do well so it can be competitive um but yeah that's what i'm really excited about just that little bit of break i'll obviously be still uploading ultra sun and moon stuff um but i, I can't wait for wife battles and things like that um and to just use pokemon like nido queen onyx uh the Lolan Persian and things and, and Wi-Fi battle and you know a Mega Gengar without Shadow Tag uh, would be pretty cool. Um, just things that are not necessarily broken, just automatically. Uh, but you know, it, it'd just be different. And I think it'll be fun adapting to. Um, I'm a big fan of RBYOU, and I think an updated, literally an updated RBYOU. I was gonna say updated Kanto again. I played him like last week in the tournament. But an updated uh, Kanto, an updated RBYOU where everything isn't as broken as it was with, you know, the speed crit mechanics and um, certain things like that. Having a physical special split, I think this is a good. You know, we've we've never had a good Kanto. Okay, that's what I'm, I'm gonna just straight up say that. Uh, objectively speaking, the first games of Pokemon were the worst games. They they have to be. They're the, they're the first, right? They're the worst. They uh, though they I'm not gonna deny they were they were not easy. Okay, they were not easy. And I know a lot of people don't care about this helping hand thing, but man, I'm I'm, I'm in my 20s. I don't. I, I, I literally forgot my age. I'm, I'm 24. I'm <laughs> okay. I'm in my 20s. I'm 24. Uh, and I don't play a Pokemon game because I want. Uh, to be challenged, I care more about the competitive side of things than I care about all also battling. Like battling people, that's why I care more about. I And I love the Pokemon franchise either. So I think that personally, at least for me, it will still be a fun game. I can't wait to ride out Onyx. I wanted to do that ever since I watched Pokemon back in the day on the big screen, right? So these are just things like my opinion on it. Um, I'm excited for a little bit of a break from Ultra Sun and Moon OU at least. And I think, you know, based on not just YouTube views, um, but what I've seen all around, lack of people playing everywhere. I think it's hard to deny that this was one of the roughest patches that Pokemon has ever had, um, and that I'm excited to see what Let's Go brings in in terms of the casual player. And then I'm super excited for what Gen 8 brings on the Switch. Cause that's gonna be fire. Um, so yeah, those are my thoughts um, on this. I don't think uh, too long. Don't read, even though it's 22:13 right now, and it's a video. Uh, I think our uh, he, uh, no held items, no abilities is not necessarily a bad thing for a metagame, and it definitely does not make it not competitive. That's just for sure. It definitely doesn't make it uncompetitive. I understand if you don't want to play the game, that's completely fine. You might skip it. That's fine. I'm going to be uploading it. I'll be having fun playing Wi Fi Battle. So, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, let me know your thoughts down below. Feel free to. And uh, yeah, goodbye, friends.